Welcome to Wolf Edu's detachment game video. And it's all about creating distance, having control, giving clear signals and commands. Um, I'm using my old dog here, Wolf. He's nearly 14, a German short-haired pointer who is going deaf um, and is slightly um, impartial with his vision too. So um, this is where clear hand signals have come in really, really well. So get your game face on. Ensure your dog is engaged. If they're dis distracted with other things, they're not going to perform and and be interactive with you and learn from you. So you need to have their attention. Now here's just a simple exercise and it is just sit or lie down. Wolf is getting a little bit old. He's a bit arthritic. So I try not to push him down and get, you know, get him to lie down so much. And where I mean push, I mean just asking. I don't mean physically pushing. Be timely with your rewards. We've been go we've gone over this. It's so important not to be too early or too late with your rewards. You can see he can't quite get to the ground. Um, so for me to be fair, I've just asked him to sit. We want that anchor point. Obviously, lying down, they're less likely to propel themselves out of that position. Although here, Wolf is on the ready for the move. He's anticipating that he's going to get treat. So here, this is just getting him used to the commands again. Sitting, lying down, staying. Now they can get confused. Both the dogs can get confused. We can, sometimes we're not that clear with our signals, even myself, you know, and we've got to be clear for them to understand. Now I would repeat these steps over and over again. I am rushing through this just for video purposes. So here I've picked up my checkpoint marker or the kitchen tea towel. Um, so I'm laying it down. I'm standing right behind it. The dog is sitting down. I've called him. I've called him and I've asked him to sit. Uh, I don't feel I was very clear on these signals there or timely with my reward there. So we're going to repeat. And you won't get it right first. Like it won't right every time, you know. But the more you do this, the more you get clear, the more the dog gets clear of your signals, um, the better you will get. So standing directly behind that checkpoint marker, ask him to come and I want him to step on the mat. So we have boundaries, you know, I didn't want him to come into my space. He didn't want to come into my space. So I had to take a step back there. Okay. And the clear hand signals stop on the mat. I didn't keep him there for long. As you get better at this, you can keep them there for longer, you know, um, five, 10, 15 seconds, a minute if you want and then call them or you can go back and reward them and doing that ha will help with your boundary platform too that exercise stop calling stop clear hand signals like a policeman or woman stopping traffic and calling him and remember to keep that energy at a level that is not hyping your dog up you know it's just a treat and a pat on the head or just a treat however you feel they, they know that's good they know that if you get a treat they've done something right they don't need all this high energy because then it gets their brain all excited and then you lose the focus so i'm just moving him here asking him to sit and reward Okay. You can see that I use my body a lot to manoeuvre Wolf rather than touching him. I will use, also use my hands and my voice. I think humans find it very hard not to talk and be completely silent. Um, but it's always clear signals. So he's sitting down, ask him to wait. And I'm just prolonging that time that he's sitting there. But his eyes are constantly on me. It. I've walked over the checkpoint mat here because I want him to know that is the line that I want him to go to. Now this is a big garden, he can go anywhere he wants and still get to me. But no, he's following that line. He stopped, I asked him to stop and come. You can use your clickers if you're doing clicker training. Um, you can use your voice. You can use um, like a ball or something. Um, I wouldn't try and do tug of war and things like that with it because it does excite your dog. I know sometimes um, 
a lot of dogs really do thrive on that more than treats. Um, but do what works for you and your dog because every dog is different. I think sometimes you're quite fortunate if you have a, a food orientated dog because it does make training a lot easier. Ask him to sit, re-engage, look at me, stop and stay. Oh, we're having a lie down. It's hard work, all this. And then prolonging that wait time. You know, it's, it's, it's quite hard on a dog to be able to do that, especially dogs that want to be with you all the time. Let's ask them to stop and then come. So I hope this video has been of some help. Um, it isn't the best video, I apologise for that, but it just gives you an idea of one, a repetitive nature, two, starting from the beginning again, even if you've done all these steps before, start from the beginning and work through them. You know, get re-engaged with your dog. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Here's a little blooper. <laughs> it's what happens when you video on your own.